Have you ever been part of a beta test for a new upcoming game? I have not, but it must have been an amazing feeling to be selected as a beta tester allowed to sneak a peek of an unfinished art of work, what hopefully is going to become an amazing game in the near future. Blizzard Entertainment started work on StarCraft in 1995, shortly after beginning development of Diablo. StarCraft was supposed to be a gap filler, with a proposed timeline of one year until release. Initially, the game was created using the aging Warcraft 2 game engine as a base. In 1996, at E3, short for Electronic Entertainment Expo, Blizzard showcased their progress on StarCraft, even though only a few months of development efforts have been put into the project. The feedback Blizzard received from showcasing StarCraft so early in the development process was anything but good, but may have contributed to the important changes that were to follow. According to media, StarCraft felt too much like Warcraft 2, with fans often calling the game Orcs in Space or Purple Warcraft, among other variations. Another issue was that one of their competitors, Iron Storm, showcased their upcoming game, Dominion Storm over Grift 3. This game seemed to be far more advanced compared to what Blizzard had to offer. The criticism from fans and media, and the feeling to fall behind other game development studios, triggered Blizzard to reboot StarCraft, and the result is the game many of us know today. The fact that Ion Storm faked their demo at E3, which was a hands-off demonstration, came to light only years after StarCraft was released, when Blizzard hired some of Ion Storm's former developers. Their entire demo at E3 was a pre-rendered movie, and the people who showed this demo we're just pretending to play the game. In today's video, I will have a look at StarCraft, but not at the final release. I will have a look at the beta version that was available around Christmas 1997, about three months before StarCraft was released to the public. Unfortunately, I couldn't find an earlier version which may have looked significantly different from the final game. Furthermore, this is the Battle.net beta, meaning there is no single player campaign and the access to the game requires a connection to Battle.net, which is a major problem. Even if those servers would still be operational over at Blizzard, I'm sure they wouldn't allow or be compatible with an unfinished release of StarCraft from 1997. So, we will have to recreate the old infrastructure ourselves to be able to get a glimpse of a game that was distributed to only a handful of people over 26 years ago. What I will do today is to set up a Battle.net server, modify StarCraft beta to talk to my private server, and see if I can start a multiplayer game, looking at the different races and see the state of development 3 months before the official release. StarCraft and StarCraft 2 are free to play now, so take this video as a trip down memory lane, like 99% of my other videos. It is time to recreate Blizzard's infrastructure from 1997 to play StarCraft over Battle.net. To accomplish this, we need two computers, one server and one client. StarCraft Beta requires a connection to Blizzard's Battle.net. TCP IP or IPX protocols were not supported in this release. Battle.net is a service offered by Blizzard, where people can connect, host games and get updates. It is also used for digital rights management. Around the year 2000, a group of gamers reverse engineered the network protocol used by Battle.net and Blizzard games. Suddenly, you could host your private servers without the need to connect to Blizzard's services. There were several legal battles that eventually were all ruled in favor of Blizzard. Nevertheless, the project Player vs Player Gaming Network lives on and is available on GitHub, in a much newer version than the one I will be using in today's video. I can't say anything regarding compatibility since I have not tested the newer version. Instead, I am using a handy installer which installs version 1.62 from 2005. Unfortunately, I cannot run the Battle.net server on the same machine that is running the StarCraft beta version. Both applications will try to open the same port, which would lead to a network-related conflict. Therefore, I have set up two Pentium systems, both clocked at 200 MHz running Windows 98 SE, connected using a self-made crossover network cable. Since there is no DHCP server in the network, we also have to configure the IP addresses. The server will get the IP address 192.168.1.100 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. The only other thing we have to do is to change a single setting on this server. 
Skip the version check for Battle.net games. This will make it possible to connect to this server with a beta version of StarCraft. Now we can turn our attention to the client. We can already start the game, but it wouldn't know how to connect to our private server. We still get an error message while the game tries to connect to Battle.net. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to configure StarCraft. We have to get a hex editor and modify a specific file, replacing the hardcoded IP addresses with our private server IP address. Once our server IP has been hacked into the game, we can try to see if our setup works. And now it is time to re-establish a connection between two applications created a long, long time ago. Now we can have a look at all three races, the Terran, the Protoss and the Zerg. By the way, did you know that the Zerg were called Zurg in early concept design? But first, let's have a look at the Terran scenario. Oh, I remember that countdown right before the multiplayer game starts. To be honest, Terran is my least favorite race, but that is probably due to me not being a hardcore StarCraft player. I feel marines are too weak and the stim pack requires sacrificing hit points for a very short boost. Without the medic, which is added later by the expansion Brood War, this race feels inferior to other races. But that is just my opinion. It looks like the Terrans have been completed in this version. All units and abilities show up as I remember them. Maybe there is a level of upgrade missing, but this looks like the final game. My favorite units are the Siege Tank for massive ground damage. I also like the Wraith Airborne Fighter for air and ground attacks. And of course the Battlecruiser. It's just so cool and massive with its Yumado gun. And finally the Cloaked Ghost, who can launch nuclear missiles. Let's move on to the second race, the Protoss. What I like about the Protoss is that they are an upgrade power race with regenerative shields. There are so many buildings and upgrades available, which may be overwhelming for new players. Your Protoss probe won't be blocked while building structures, as they are warped to the battlefield. But all those nice traits come at a price, literally. The Protoss require a lot of resources, and units usually take longer to build. However, once your troops are assembled, they can decimate, if not overwhelm, a seemingly stronger army. And although it looks like this race is complete as well, I did find a few abilities that have not been implemented yet. Some of the abilities have their images showing up, but they remain greyed out with a hint that more work needs to be done here. The Arbiter has three ability fields, one with an icon stating blank. In the final release, this field is actually empty, so it is, in fact, blank. My favorite unit is the carrier with its tiny ships, which can attack air and ground units. Another powerful Protoss unit are Archons. They have very limited hit points, but compensate for it having very strong shields. Of course there are other interesting units like the High Templar and the Reaver, all of which add to a balanced army fighting off enemies effectively or attacking your opponent's base. Now finally to my favorite race. Zork? Uh, Nightmare Invaders. Yes, those were all names once given to the Zerg. Luckily those names did not prevail. The Zerg are a race controlled by a hive mind, one single entity aware of every single unit. The Zerg are pure organics, even the buildings, which grow from your drones. Therefore, structures seem to be cheaper compared to Terran or Protoss, but you already paid 50 crystals for your drone, which disappears with each building. As with the Protoss, the Zerg also have a few unfinished abilities. 
Both of those races seem to be at a similar state in development and almost complete. The Ultralisk, however, seems to have an unfinished ability that didn't make it into the final game. Some research reveals this to be a Roar ability. This apparently functions similarly to the Bloodlust ability from Warcraft, which increases haste by 30% for all party and raid members for a few seconds. My absolute favorite unit is the Hydralisk. Fast, cheap and quite strong. And they explode nicely when killed. Furthermore, they can attack air and ground units. I think this to be the most versatile unit in all StarCraft. My absolute favorite unit. It's really unfortunate that I couldn't select an AI opponent. What I also noticed is that the Overlord unloads all units simultaneously. I believe in the final game, units were released one at a time, with a small delay in between. Of course, there are still a few bugs here and there, but those may have even made it into the first publicly released versions of StarCraft. There are a lot more details about StarCraft that I wish I could share, but this was a tough research project for me, including finding all the required software to make this work. I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button of this video if you enjoyed this content. But before I go, here is one more detail about the intro of StarCraft. Have you ever noticed that it doesn't really match the game? Yes, the Terrans are introduced, but they were supposed to be scavengers looking for technologies they could acquire. This should have been a feature, but was later scrapped during the development process. The intro was completed while the game was in the design stage. A lot has changed along the way, and that is why you cannot see much of the actual game in the intro. And with this, we will conclude today's episode going back to 1997, before the world came to know...